Oh, hello everyone. Welcome to Dwyer Gaming. I'm Mike, and today we're going to be talking about a game called Risk of Rain 2. It's a sci-fi, third-person shooter, roguelike game, collecting items, killing monsters. It's a lot of fun. So let's just go run the intro, and then we'll get started. So the say in this game is you are a crew member on a spaceship called U.S. Safe Travels. I mean, the setting doesn't really make too much sense. But once you go and you start the game, um, the only option you're going to be given is a single survivor uh, called the Commando. Now, when you go and check this character out, every character is going to have at least four or five options under the description for skills to kind of describe what that character does. As you play the game, you'll be unlocking more characters. You can see up here, I actually have three characters unlocked. Um, each character plays very differently. The Commando, which we'll be um, playing here, is, plays different from the Huntress, which plays different from the... The Maltee, which is kind of like a robot. Um, and there's three different difficulties. There's Drizzle, which means things a little bit easier for you. Then again, there is also Rainstorm, which is kind of the normal. And then Monsoon is if you hate yourself. Um, I suggest if you haven't played before, start playing on easy mode and work your way up. Because it is a difficult thing. So as you kind of crash land down on the planet, um, on these little pods, you're kind of introduced to the world that you're around. And each stage of this game has a different setting to it. Um, right here we have uh, like kind of open fields. That's kind of general theme of the, the beginning area. So you see this is just a, this is a lot of jumping around. There's also kind of like this, I guess like a ruins area of some alien civilization. Which is another stage we have. Uh, another one is in a, like a desert, which used to be an aqueduct. So that kind of explains why we have these kind of valleys in here. There's also like a, not like a jungle, but almost like a forest area. And we also have what's a, uh, a swamp area. Outside of that, there's also secret areas I uh, won't be covering over, but there's a lot of them that you can uncover. Oh, and then there's this area. This area is just terrible. Just uh, don't go here. Just if you get up here, just uh, turn around. Nothing good ever happens from this stage. Um, you also have kind of like jump pads throughout the environment. Usually they have particle effects that sp spring off from them. Um, and as you're playing uh, and fighting the, the Desidens of this planet, every monster you defeat, you actually gain money. You can just look at the top left, I'm at 30, and then it goes to 33. Um, and you can use that money to go and make purchases from several different interactables in the game. Like over here is like a, like a random shrine, which gives you a chance to get a random item when selecting, but every time you use it, it costs more money. Sometimes it just doesn't like you. Eh, like that? Yep. Yep. Thanks game, all right. But there's also boxes. Now boxes will go and give you a random item after you pay the cost to buy it. Um, item rarity goes from white, which is the most common. Um, so over here, there's like a try selector here. It shows you what item you will get. Um, and all these here are white. The next rarity is gonna be green, which is uncommon. And then from there is red, which is rare. And then there's gonna be blue for lunar items. And then there's also gonna be, uh, here's a barrel. You open this thing up. And we get money for the whole team. Everyone likes money. And then also here, you can go and activate drones. Use money to go and, and get these automatons to assist you. This one here is a little flying bullet drone. Gunner drone, it's called. It flies around. Then there's also these turrets. They pack a pretty good punch, but they're stationary. So if you're in a tight spot, don't feel, feel free to like open up one of those. And then also we have what is a equipment. Equipment is different from items because you only get one at a time and it has a cooldown. So over here it's under my M4 selection. Uh, but each piece of equipment does something unique. This one's uh, kind of like a teleporter ability. It gives me a little more uh, agility. So over here we just go instead of walking all the way around, we can go up like so and select our next item. There's also printers, and what printers does is it will print the item that's being shown for a random item in your inventory. So if you want a specific item or you're trying to build a specific character, you can go and activate uh, one of these printers to get the item you want. Uh, 
There's also a teleporter. At the end of each stage, you need to find these little horn platform, which is the teleporter, and it will summon the boss. So here we have to fight the stone titan. And so part of this is surviving because now there's going to be an increased rate of spawn rate for all the residents of the, of the stage. But you also fight this fairly difficult boss as well. As soon as you defeat the boss, um, the teleporter will spawn a few items. One for each player who's been playing the game with you. Right now just one player, so I only get one. But the teleporter still isn't ready to go. You can see here it's about 62, 63%. You have to stay in this red area until it's 100% charged. Usually it takes 100 seconds altogether. Once it's charged, you'll see that it turns white. You can interact with it, and it's gonna go and consume all your money and convert that money into experience, which will make your character um, stronger. And off next stage. Uh, another threat you have to watch out for is all the spawns from the stage that they come after you. If you don't uh, keep an eye on them, they, they can easily swarm you and uh, give you a bad day. Another thing about this game is you're, you're gonna die a lot. It's just part of the game. A lot of rogue, rogue roguelikes are like this. As soon as all the people on the game pass away, they die. You're shown a summary screen and the continue button brings you right back to the menu screen. Um, and there's a there's a lot of different ways that you can, uh, you can die. No matter how strong or powerful you think you are, if you keep playing the game, eventually it's just gonna wreck you. I just died. I don't know from what. Um, playing this game single single player is difficult, but with uh, more players, it makes your survivability a little bit better. You don't have to... If someone dies during a stage, as long as one survivor completes the stage and goes to a teleporter, your your teammates are going to jump in for you. Another great thing about this game, which is pretty much a highlight of the game, is all the items you get. The items can be healing items, it can be items that allow you to, to shoot faster, jump higher, you know, gain shields... Um, gain special effects during attacks. Um, there's a lot of different items in the game that allow you to play a lot of different ways. And so, as you go around, collect money, open up these boxes and get these items, um, you can really get a different uh, kind of experience every single time. But they've done a really good job with the items themselves. Each one, if you end up having multiple of one type, it actually increases the power of that particular item or what the effect that item gives. So it's always good to, like, if you like having shields, finding items that give you more shields would be great to stack. Um, but uh, let's go on to some quick tips. Are we, uh, we're still montaging the item thing here. Uh, can we can we cut this? Can we need to... We don't have much time here. All right, use the middle mouse button to highlight things for your teammates. You hit tab, it shows everyone's items and what they have, and when you hover over them, it should tell you what they do. Lunar coins in this game is a new currency that is used to get lunar items. Collect these when you can. Don't be afraid to use drones. You can get a lot of them and they all help out and so you can go and just cover the skies with them. Sacrificial shrines will give you money but at the cost of health. Make sure you have a way to heal yourself before interacting with these. Each time you interact with them, the cost is more severe. Um, printers. I'm kind of embarrassed about this one because I just recently learned it, but um, one of the risks of using printers is you don't control what item in your inventory it takes. So you can go and so happen get in a situation where, like here, you have to go between two different printers trying to print the right item you want to keep the build you want to keep. So it can be uh, kind of annoying at sometimes. But there is a solution to this. It's called the scrapper. This It looks like a trash can. And when you interact with it, you can tell it which item to transform into a piece of scrap. And what scrap items do is when you interact with a printer, the scrap item is guaranteed to be the first thing to be spent in your inventory. So this is going to help you keep the build you want while going through this game. It's a big it was a game changer for me. I hope it's, it would be one for you too. So the sheer chaos that this game brings and all the randomness, it's just a lot of, good, it's a lot of fun. Uh, even more so with some friends. So I'm gonna let you see some gameplay here before we call it quits for the day. Oh. We got a lot of guys coming in, so I had This is so funny looking. It looks so silly. Wait, if I buff you, does all your turrets get buffed too? No. We may have to move. Ow, 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 ow. Ow, 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 ow. All right, well, that's all I got. I hope you found this video uh, helpful. If you do end up getting the game, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. And if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do to go and show your support.
Um, until next time, take care. Shh. Wow.